So I'm at a crossroads and have three choices for EFI. Greetings fellow DIYer and welcome to my video. This 393 build has gone exceptionally slowly. There's been house projects that have taken up my time. I'm in the process of remodeling my workspace so that I will have a more dedicated area to work on projects, shoot videos, those kind of things. And so this has gone at a turtle's pace. Here we are, we're already in the middle of summer and this motor still hasn't been put together. When I'm not out in the shop or in the yard, working on the house, doing those kind of things, I'm oftentimes doing research and planning the next phase of this project. And one of the things that I've spent a lot of time researching is EFI. I've decided that both this 393 going in my 62 Galaxy and the 302 that's going in my 64 and a half Ford Mustang are going to get EFI. And there are tons of options out there. For the 393 build, I've narrowed it down to three. Well, actually, I've narrowed it down to two and a half. If I'm being completely honest, one option is really not an option at all. And I've narrowed it down to two possible choices. The first option, the non-option, is something you can see in another one of my videos. I took a truck EFI lower intake, a Ford Mustang 5.0 upper intake, and machined a three quarter inch spacer to mate the two together. When I did this project, I was only planning on throwing a 351 into the Galaxy, not rebuilding it as a 393. I wasn't planning on doing a lot of upgrades other than some better flowing heads. And so at the time, I wasn't too worried about the airflow restriction that the 5.0 upper was going to create on the 351 lower. Now that I'm going to a 393, now that I've upgraded to thumper heads that are going to flow even more, now that I've gone with a bigger cam that again is going to flow even more, that 5.0 upper on the truck lower is not an option at all. I have a feeling it would be like trying to drink a beverage through a coffee straw. It's going to be just sucking, 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 and, and missing a lot of high end. I'd be willing to bet that this motor that I'm building would outflow that 5.0 upper at somewhere around 3,000 RPMs. Basically, I refuse to let my motor be strangled above 3,000 RPM. So that right there is why the 5.0 upper on the 351 truck lower wasn't going to work for this 393 build. Before I talk about this, let me make something perfectly clear. I am not sponsored by anybody. I'm not getting any kickbacks from Holly. This was not given to me by Holly. I paid for this. Any products that you see in this video that are from Holly, I paid for. So they are not paying me for my opinion or have any affiliation with Holly. So that brings us to option two. This is a Sniper EFI. Now this may look a little different than some of the Sniper EFIs that you have seen. A lot of them are black and they're big and kind of boxy and they don't look exactly like a carburetor. But this is called a Stealth Sniper EFI and it's designed to look a lot more like a carburetor. Some major advantages to going with this is you get the EFI, it's self-tuning, it's easy to use, it's plug and play. There are, however, a couple of concerns. The first concern is heat is hard on the electronic components in this. We're not talking about specifically the injectors, but the computer components that live in either end of this. So for best results and long life, you do wanna put an insulative spacer between this and your intake manifold. The other thing that is super important with this is this type of throttle body EFI, because of the fact that there are sensors mounted to the underside that are helping control the flow, it really needs to be an open plenium situation. 
Now that's a problem for me because open plenium intakes are a lot taller than this typically and height is a major concern of mine. The second issue is this project is all about torque. Everything I have done with the exception of getting a little bit more high RPM with the camshaft, everything I have done on this build has been to maximize torque. My 62 Galaxy is a big old gal and it's heavy and it needs all the torque it can get to get moving down the road. And the biggest difference between a dual plane manifold like this and an open plenium manifold is where you produce power and torque. A dual plane intake manifold is going to give you way more low end torque, but not have the same overall flow as an open plenium. An open plenium manifold is going to perform less effectively on the low end torque, but it is going to run into higher RPMs. So what do you do? Well, the answer is really pretty simple. I'm going to put this on my mill and I'm going to mill down about three quarters of an inch out of this wall. Then when I add a quarter inch insulative spacer, we're going to have a full inch of sharing between these two ports. And really that should give me the best of both worlds. That will allow me to run this. It will be able to sense the air movement and calibrate the fuel properly. We will get more even distribution of fuel and air to all the cylinders. And I'm not going to sacrifice the low end torque the same way I would with an open plenium. I'm also not going to have the height restrictions. So that right there, option number two. So if this is such a good combination, if it's as simple as milling down this centerpiece, hooking this up and it's plug and play, we drive down the road, why is there even an option number three? Well, it's pretty simple. I am a DIY guy. There is a reason that every single one of my videos says, Greetings, fellow DIYer, and welcome to my video. Because for me, it's about making stuff myself. Anybody can go to the store and buy off-the-shelf parts and make them work. But for me, there is an enjoyment in modifying things and making something work in a way other than it's designed. That's why there's a Jag rear end underneath my Mustang that is a bolt-in because I'm like, I think I can make that happen. I can come up with a solution to make that fit as if it was designed that way. And that's what we're gonna do for option number three. Now this is a truck 351 lower. And this is a Chevy six cylinder throttle body injector. These two parts have nothing in common. This is a significant downgrade from the Sniper EFI that I just showed you. So why would I be showing you these two parts? Well, I am going to build a Frankenstein EFI. So for me, it's gonna be electronic Frankenstein injection. And what I'm gonna do is use two throttle body injectors as throttle bodies. I'm going to connect the shafts so that we have four butterflies feeding into these eight openings. And the result should be a much higher flowing system than my previous Frankenstein injection with the 5.0 upper and the 351 lower. And it should not suffer from the strangling at the higher RPM. Now granted, it's still not gonna perform at 6,000 or 7,000 RPM probably, but that's not what this motor is built for. This motor is built to go up to 5,500 RPM, and I think this combination will, will do. The first project that I did with the 5.0 upper and the truck lower was controlled by a Holley Terminator X. Again, something I paid for. Now you're probably thinking, wait a minute, He's got a Terminator X and he's got a Sniper EFI. Those things are far from cheap. This guy's just wasting money. Well, I'm really not. 
if I can get the Terminator X to work the way I want it to with this setup on the 393, then that's where the Terminator X is going to go. If I can't get it to work the way I want it to, the Sniper EFI is going on the 393. And then the Terminator X will go on the 302 with just an Explorer upper and lower intake. So either way, those two EFI fuel management systems are going to get used on my projects. So the question is, how do I make this work with this? Well, the first thing you have to do is you have to remove all the fuel injection crap, because again, I'm only using this as a throttle body. Second, I need to make some sort of riser, preferably that has eight individual runners, because I would like to, again, maximize torque, and torque is a function of runner length. We need the throttle bodies to clear the fuel rail. And because of the fact that there is an imbalance between these four and these four, at the top, we're going to need some sort of open plenium to allow air to flow equally. For the purpose of demonstration, I'm just going to put a piece of steel here. This is not how I'm going to do it, but it is roughly the right height. This is a two inch piece of tube steel, and it raises the throttle bodies to the height that I need. Then, if we take one throttle body and put it here, notice we have the place where the linkage connects. I have removed the throttle position sensor. Then, we have this one where I have removed the throttle linkage and it still has the throttle position sensor. If I connect these two shafts, we now have four butterflies feeding into eight cylinders. They will all move simultaneously from one throttle linkage cable. So it's not like I'm having to do levers and adjustment that's moving two different throttle linkage arms. The throttle position sensor is going to be totally read off of one thing. And this should flow enough air into that 393 to properly feed it. I haven't decided if I'm going to buy one large chunk of aluminum and machine it to connect these two pieces, or if I'm going to buy a thinner piece of aluminum to make the open plenium at the top, and then basically just cut the bottom off of a truck 351 upper and then weld the two pieces together. That's still to be determined, but I'm going to take you along on that journey. I'm going to make a video specifically on this Frankenstein EFI. I'm going to show you the machining that I'm going to do to the aluminum that I'm going to use to make the adapters. And if it works, you're going to see a video. If it doesn't work, you're still going to get to see a video. The last thing I want to go over is I did some calculation for numbers. I took the area of the original 351 butterflies and calculated it out. Then I multiplied by the increase between a 351 and a 393. In other words, the percentage increase from a 351 to a 393 I multiplied that times the butterfly size. So based on the Ford OEM butterfly size for the 351, it gave me the size that I needed for a 393, all other things being equal. Now, this engine is getting built to perform way better than a stock 351, even if it was increased to a 393. So I need more butterfly area to provide more airflow. The area of these four butterflies added together is 25% more surface area than the increased butterfly size when factoring in the increase from the 351 to the 393. And frankly, that should be about perfect. This should flow enough air to give me everything that I need to feed this motor and I should not have any issues with restriction. I'm also going to have longer runners, so I should have good low-end torque. And frankly, I'm just looking forward to it because it's going to be a fun project. Look for that on future episodes on this 393 build.
If you like what you've seen, please click like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.